Hey, good people. Trying to log on, y'all. Give me a second. Hey, hey, hey. I see the screen is messing up or something. Hey, sis. Good morning. I'm not sure what's going on. I pray you're having a great day thus far. Good morning, good morning. Good morning for those of you that are joining me on my YouTube channel or Instagram. My name is Jacina K, and this is Jacina Speaks. Um, on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we come together around 7.30ish a.m. and we just have these conversations with God, heart-to-heart -heart conversations with God where we lean our ear to his mouth to hear what is on his mind? What is he what is he saying to us today? What is it that he wants us to to become a, more aware of, be intentional about? We just have talks with daddy. That's that's pretty much what the morning manner is, uh heart to heart conversations. They're just conversations with daddy, conversations about life, about faith, about how to walk this walk and how to live a life of faith. Um, knowing, remembering, and constantly reminding yourself that you know you're not perfect, but you but you're chosen, right? You're not perfect, but you're chosen. And so, if we can remember that, if we can keep that at the forefront of our mind, if we could just hold on to that that consolation that no, I'm not perfect. I will never get it right all the time every day, but my heart desires to please Him, right? And so when you have that heart posture where you desire to please God and you desire to live for him and you desire to live according to his word and the principles that he has given us, then guess what? Every day gets better and better than the day before. Every day you learn that his grace is sufficient. Every day you are reminded that he is my strength, that without him, I am truly nothing. You know, I am reminded, um, I am constantly reminded, y'all hold on, got to turn my heat on. I turns it on and off, on and off all day. <laughs> but I am reminded, um, you know, of just how good God is and the fact that, you know, I think we talked about this on Monday, the fact that he chose us. So basically, God knew, right? He knew what he was getting into when he chose us, right? Let me say that again. God knew what he was getting into when he chose us. So it, it, it wasn't like he said, okay, I'm going to get in this relationship with, you know, JC, and I'm going to get in this relationship with Karen. I'm going to get in this relationship with Dana. I'm going to get in this relationship with Richard. I just want to see what happens. Mm -mm. God has always been intentional about us. He has always made us his priority. He has always put us first. And I believe that on today, he's saying to us in our relationships, if you would apply the principles if you would if you would love and live the way that I love and that I live in and through you then your relationships will be better we cannot depend on our own selves right there's this song that I've been listening to and it's been ministering to my spirit and it's called save me from my flesh my god it's called save me from my flesh and the reason that I love this song, I, I just came into the knowledge of this song um, on, on yesterday. And um, I can't think of the guy's full name, but his uh, first name is Theophilus. i never forget it because I had a good, good friend, uh, a, a cousin, if you will, uh, Maurice Theophilus uh, Lewis. 
and so he's gone on to be with the Lord now but um, he was an amazing psalmist he was just bad to the bone and uh, this guy also is an amazing psalmist and um, the psalm just talks about Lord save me from my flesh just save me from myself because a lot of times it isn't the enemy a lot of times it's the inner me does that make sense a lot of times it isn't the enemy the E N E M Y a lot of times it is the inner I N N E R M E it is the inner me that we need to deal with a lot of times the reason that our relationships do not work is because it is the enemy the inner me it's the inner me that it is the flesh it's it's the inward parts of me it's my thoughts it's 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 my feelings it, it's what I see you know, those are the things that trip us up in our relationships, not just with God, but with ourselves and with others. I was laughing this morning on my way to work because I was saying, wow, uh, Tuesday, Tuesday was a little rough for me. And I'm telling y'all, I did everything that I could, you know trying to make sure that I was intentional about the day and you know just really intentional and and mindful and watchful of my feelings and how I was feeling and and, and just all of that so that I could stay on top of it but what I really found myself doing was riding the wave and you know I talked about that a little bit on Wednesday but I was laughing on my way to work because I was saying my god how 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 things change. You remember the saints of old. I could I could hear Miss uh, Miss Bell sitting over there in the corner at Shiloh. I could hear Miss Bell saying, "This too shall pass." I could hear Miss Alma saying, "This too shall pass." I could hear Auntie Louise, who's who's still with us, saying, "This too shall pass." Over there in that right corner, I could hear them. I could hear them, and and. You know, the thing that really just got to my spirit was how we allow our feelings and emotions and the things that we can sense, you know, how we allow those things to be uh, dictators instead of indicators of how we live, function, and move, right? We have to be so careful that we do not allow our feelings and our emotions to dictate our actions. Feelings and emotions are indicators. They are not dictators. They indicate. They are to get your attention to let you know, hey, sis, this is where you are. Sir, this is where you are. Now, I, I, I'm a big proponent of not ignoring your feelings and emotions. And that's why, again, on Wednesday, we talked about how to process feelings, emotions, pain, disappointment, especially when God tells you something. He gives you a promise. He tells you something, and then you don't see that thing come to pass, right? So I was, I was, I've been just having these conversations with God all week, and I'm like, Daddy, can you tell me what is going on with me? What, what's happening with me? And I don't think we do enough check-ins with ourselves. Uh, I, he told me today we were going to be talking about relationships. I, I, don't, I don't quite know what. But what I do know is that your number one relationship after your relationship with the Father should be your relationship with yourself. Many times what we do is we place other people before us. And then we get all out of sorts when other people do not reciprocate that same love and that same attention and that same affection and that same sacrifice for us. And one of the things that I have told myself this year is, Jacina, this year is all about you. It's all about doing what's good for you. If you have to let some people go, let them go. If you have to remove some people uh, from, from different levels of your life into another level, another outside level of your life, do it. 
We've got to stop feeling like, oh, I've been with them for so long, so, you know, I, I, I need to stay with them. If it's not healthy, it can kill you. Let me say that again. If the situation, if the connection, if the relationship is not healthy, if it is not thriving, if it does not have a strong foundation, you're going to find yourself in a very, very tight, a very miserable, a demanding, a, a, a very uh, uh, a chaotic uh, relationship or situation because it is not giving you life. Instead, it's sucking the life out of you. So today, I I want you to say I want you to type this in the chat if you're able to I choose me today I choose me I, I choose me right come on I want you to type that in the chat and while you're typing in the chat we're gonna pray father I thank you I love you I honor and I adore you this morning I thank you for just giving us another day to be in your presence to be amongst the living to be able to breathe to be able to 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 walk and to move upon the earth so that you can do your bidding with us so that you can continue to to teach us and speak to us and and use us and move through us for your on behalf of your kingdom to get to those oh god that you are trying to reach in this time and this season lord we yield to you today. Use us, God. We yield to, to, to you today. Speak to, Shande. Speak to us, Holy Spirit. We need you. We can't do I said we can't do anything without you, but we know that with you all things are possible. We know that with you anything is possible. So, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. We pray, Father God, that you would have your way in us, that you would have your way through us, and that you would do what only you can do for us. God, we trust you today. Your word tells us to trust in the Lord, trust in you, trust in you our father with all of our heart and not to lean on our own understanding but you told us that in all our ways if we just acknowledge you that you would direct our path so God we're asking that you come into the room we're asking that you meet us at this time we ask that you come into our presence right now and speak to us speak to us individually first and then collectively as a whole speak to us father we need to hear from you we have a desire and a hunger to hear from from you we have a desire and a hunger to walk your word out in our lives God we don't want to just be hearers of your word but we want to be doers we want to be the ones that you look at and say I, I, I know she'll do it I'm giving her this assignment because she'll do it I know she can handle it because I know what I put in her I know they don't look at him the way that I look at him but he is my prized possession and I have something great that rests on the inside of him and I will use him not because he is perfect not because she is perfect but because she's faithful but because I know that when I call on her when I call on him they will do that which I've called them to do so father we yield use us today Kashi. use us today God to be a vessel in the earth that you use to draw others to you God I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight I pray that I say nothing that you aren't saying I pray that I will speak nothing that you're not speaking speak to me speak through me and then speak back to me I had myself behind the cross that you may use me on today bless those that will watch this live bless those that will watch the replay God and speak to them God right where they are and we thank you for it in advance in Jesus name Amen. Listen, I, 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 I don't not say Rosa. I, I hear the spirit of the Lord saying, hmm, try it again. I don't know who that's for. I don't know what that means. But I hear the spirit of the Lord saying, I need you to try it again. Uh -huh. I need you to try it again. He's saying to you, I need you to build your faith. Listen, I need you to get your faith back to the place that it used to be. And I need you to try it again. I hear the Lord saying, this is what has happened. Some things have come up in your life and they've come. Listen, uh, can somebody find the scripture where it talks about the trying of your faith? Can you find that for me? I want to say James, but I'm not 100% sure. I know that it's in the New 
Testament, but there is a scripture that talks about the testing of your faith. Can somebody find it for me, please, so that that uh, 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 it's a word for you. I, I, I understand what I put in the comments as far as uh, it's Relationship Friday, uh, and the relationship, <laughs> Rosa, the relationship that we're talking about is the relationship with you. And the relationship, listen, because when you get the relationship with you right, when you, when you, when you get this relationship right, that's between you and the Father. He's good and you're good. When these two relationships, when these two connections line up and they're walking side by side, baby, everything that you're connected to, every other relationship will thrive. Every other relationship will be healthy. Every other relationship will bear fruit. Every other relationship, listen, will be on a strong foundation. But sis, today you got to get you right. Sir, today you got to get you together. Today it's got to be all about you. Come on. All about you. It's got to be all about you. Thank you, Michelle. Come on. Let's go to James 1 and 3. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go there. Ah, James 1 and 3. James 1 and 3. Come on. Let's roll. Let's go. Let's go. James 1 and 3. I believe the Lord is, is, is speaking to somebody this morning. And he wants to remind you. Come on. James 1, 3 through 4. Uh huh. He wants to remind you that these tests that you have, when, 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 listen, I'm going to back this thing up to one. I'm going to back it up to one because I need to see what it says before that. So let's go. James chapter 1, <clears throat> verses 1 through 4. And let's see what the what the word of the Lord is saying to us this morning concerning this scripture. Father, we thank you. We trust you. And we love you. Your word is our truth. Mm -hmm. Your word is our truth. Come on, tell him that. Say, God, your word is my truth. Yes, your word is my truth. Come on, say that again. Your word is my truth. Mm -hmm. Your word is my truth. Come on. Tell your word is my truth. I know what the facts say. Who am I talking to? I know what the facts say. But your word is, is true. Uh, come on. I know what the facts say. Listen to me. Listen to me. Come here. Come here. I need to I need you to get this. Thank you, Sharon. You're 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 the best. I know what it looks like. This is why God is saying to us this morning. You cannot look at what you see. You cannot base your next move. Come on. You cannot base your next your next action, your next decision, your next step based upon your feelings. I said, Rosa Terraso. She come up so like a robosa. You cannot, come on, you cannot base your next move, your next decision, what you're gonna do, your purpose, your vision, the plan of God for your life, what you're gonna do next. You cannot base that upon your feelings, your thoughts, and your emotions. Why? Because they they differ, because they they they, they fluctuate, they, they flex, they, they they change, they're not constant nor are they consistent, right? You have to make sure that the word of God, come here, is in you, uh-huh, it is in you because when the word of God is in you, it will produce the fruit that you need in due season. Come here, listen to me. I say, Rosa, I need you to understand. Hear me well. If you don't do nothing else for 2023, I need you to promise yourself uh -huh, that you're going to work on this relationship and this relationship. Your goal for 2023 should not be another house. It should not be another car. It should not be more money. It should, listen, it should not be these external things that come and go, that lose their value. Shay, Russell, your responsibility and your identity is built in the way that you live not what you have somebody today it is not built in what you have but it is built upon what's in you what what's what's working through you right you can have all of these wonderful things and then you could be as mean as hell I said it you can have a lot of great things but if you don't have good character if you don't have a strong foundation you won't have the things with joy I'm telling you this year my assignment if my mindset and my listen my responsibility is to get me together at whatever cost that cost means I might have to shut some people down I might have to let some people go but the truth of the matter is God will always be with me why because he's told us that he would never leave us nor forsake us so if he's told us this then that means that when 
he speaks a word to us, when you read your word, uh -huh, when you spend time in the presence of the Lord, whether that's reading the word of God, whether that's in song, whether you're praying, whether you're listening to a message, whatever it is that you're doing to get the word in you, God says when you get that word, I need you to not only hide it in your heart so that you don't sin against me, but I need you to meditate on it day and night. Somebody say day and night. The reason that he's saying, come here, he, the reason that he's saying he wants you to meditate on it day and night is because he needs it to get in you. You see, he needs it to get in you because he knows that when it gets in you, that it will work for you. Hear me, hear me, hear me. Listen, I need you to catch this by the spirit because he's moving fast today. I need you to catch this. This is a caught word. This is not a necessarily a taught, but it's a caught word. I need you to catch it here. God saying to you today, I know that you did it before and you're saying I failed at it. It didn't go the way that I thought. This could be your relationship. This could be with your spouse. This could be with your children. This could be with your job. Maybe it's a business. Maybe it's going to forgive. Yeah, I heard you. God said you need to go and forgive them. You need to go and make amends. You need to go and get that right. Why? I need you to go and do it again because this time when you go, I'm going with you. See that last time when you did it, you did it in and of your own strength. You did it in and of your own self. Listen, those were your words, not mine. Those were your thoughts, not mine. Those were your ways, not mine. God says, I need you to do it again. Come on, somebody say it. Do it again. Come on. Do it again. Why? Because he says, this time I'm going to go before you. I need to tell you this. I'm reminded again of this scripture where, where in the Old Testament, ah, maybe around King somewhere, I'm not exactly sure, but in the Old Testament, it talked about, uh-huh, King Jehoshaphat, when it was time for him to fight. King Jehoshaphat, I'm telling you, you do this every time I wear a uh, fatigue. It was his time to go and to conquer, right? It was his time to go and to do something, right? Well, when he went to go do that which God told him to do, God told him, send the praisers out. Send the worshipers out. Send them out. Send them out. I need you to send the praises and the worshipers out. You would wonder what was God thinking when he said send the praises and the worshipers out. Why would you send the praises and the worshipers out to a battle? Hear me today. The reason that God said he wants you to send the praises and the worshipers out. Listen to me. Sis, the reason he's saying I want you to spend some time in praise and worship. Who am I talking to? He says I want you to spend some time in praise and worship. Huh? I don't want you to ask me for anything. I just want you to praise and worship me. I just want you to say, listen, I, I don't even want you to turn nothing on. I know you love that song. You play it every day. It's like it's on rewind. You love that song. You play it all the time. And it just really gets you more. No, 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 no. I need you to start thinking about what I've done, thinking about who I am, thinking about the way that I made a way out of no way the last time and I did it before and I'm going to do it again. Yeah, I need you to get that in your spirit. Come on. I need you to get that into your in, in, inside of you and then I need you to start thinking on it because I heard an old say, a mother in the right corner. I heard the mother that was wearing the all white say one time, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where I would be. But then she switched that thing up and she said, I know that if it was the Lord, that it was the Lord, it was it was the Lord, the reason why I'm still here. It was the Lord, the reason why I'm still in my right mind. It was nobody but the Lord. God is saying to you, I need you to get in your corner. I need you to go into your prayer closet. I need to, I don't care if you're in your car, turn the radio off. I don't care if you're at your desk, turn everything down. I need you to, listen, if you got to go in your car, I need you to get in a place and in a space where you can worship me. He said, I don't want no rehearsal. I want you to sing a new song. I want you to sing me something that you've never sung before. I want you to lift up a praise up out of your belly, up out of your spirit spirit based upon who I am to you. I know that you're facing something that's not looking good. I know that you're facing something and you're trying to figure out what happened. God, I thought you were with me. Somebody said that this morning. Uh, JC, I, I, I know that you're saying do it again, but I really thought that God was with me the last time. Who, 
who is that? I, I really thought that God told me to do that. I, I, I really thought. God says, I want you to come back and I want you to sit with me. And then after you sit with me and you seek me, not for what I can do, but I need you to seek me just because you want to be with me. You ever been in a relationship like that? Hey, God. Ah, he taking me a lot of places. Y'all just got to roll with me. You ever been in a relationship with somebody and all you want to do is just spend time with them? Y'all ain't got to be going nowhere. You don't have to be doing nothing. Y'all could just be sitting there in silence. But you know they're there. You know that they are with you. You know, oh, my baby's here. My boo here. You, you know, I, I, I had my granddaughter this weekend. And, 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 and so we were sitting on the couch watching TV. And I noticed that th th she kept scooting up close to me. Hey, she, la so. Ah, she kept scooting up close to me. And I was like, well, Layla, I ain't even got enough room. She said, I, I just want to be close to you, Glamma. Ah, baby, I listen, I moved all the way over in the corner. I made myself uncomfortable so that she could be comfortable. Why? Because she messed up and said those words. I just want to be close to you, Grandma. I just want to be close to you, Grandma. I just, I just want to get closer to you. And that's what God is saying to you. That I just want to get closer to you. He said, I just, oh, oh, oh. Listen, listen, listen. It ain't no love like his love. I know I'm waiting on my future husband, but baby, he ain't going to never be able to take the place of my daddy. It's no love like his love. I'm telling you, when you fall in love with Jesus. It is the best thing that will ever happen to you. <laughs> Why? Because he will he will take every crooked place and make it straight. He will take everything that's in you and he'll fix it and make it right. I'm telling you, he said, I want you to draw closer to me. I want you to sing me a song that you've never sung before. Because that song is going to come up out of your spirit. I want you to sing. And then as you sing, I want you to throw your hands up. See, when you throw your hands up, what you're telling him is, God, I surrender. What you're telling him is, God, I trust you. What you're telling him is God I believe. What you're telling him is God do it your way. What you're telling him is God I trust your plan. You're telling him God I surrender. As a matter of fact you're waving the white flag. You're saying God I don't know what to do but I surrender. But listen before I step out to the, to the deep. But, but before I launch this business. Before I apply for this job. But, but before I go and speak to my spouse. Before I discipline my children. God I trust you. I wave the white flag. The, the signature of the white flag and said, I surrender. Yay! I surrender. Why are you telling God I surrender? You're telling him that you surrender because what you're doing is you're saying, in listen, they used to say, any way you bless me, Lord, I'll be satisfied. What you're saying to God is, God, I trust your plan, your will, and your purpose for my life. I trust it, God. I trust that it's good for me. I trust that it's good for me. Listen, I need to say this. Let's jump back. Go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. James 1 says, come on, James 1. Y'all still with me? Let me see if you're still in the chat. Are you still with me? Are you still? <laughs> mm -hmm. Are you still with me? Come on, I need to see you. Are you still with me? I'm telling you right now. <clears throat> God is saying to somebody, stop looking. I know what the, I know it's a fact. It is a fact. You might be catching hell right now. It's a fact. Your money might be a little jumpy. It might be a little funny. It's a fact. Your health might not be the best. It's a fact. He ain't never told us to ignore no facts. <laughs> Baby, you better hear me today. <clears throat> Did you hear what I just said? God ain't never told you to ignore no facts. What he said was to, listen, what he said was you pull down. Every stronghold, every thought, anything that is not agreement with my will, you pull that down. What he's saying is, I, 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 yes, it's going to come. Just like these trials he's talking about in James 1. He said these trials are going to come. These things are going to come. They have to come. What they're coming for is they're coming for the word. See, see. This is why you don't have time to play games in 2023. You don't have time to play games acting like you you get you getting uh spending time with God. You don't have time to play these games acting like it's no more acting. All of the acting. See, I believe the pandemic came. I don't believe God did it, or sent it, but I believe He used. It. Remember, the Bible says that He works all things together for His good. I believe that when the pandemic came, God said, "Now I want to see what's really in you." <clears throat> and some of us found out that we really didn't have God 
like we thought we had God. We really didn't know God like we thought we knew God. Or you really found out that church was just entertaining. That, that you was just really, you was really more concerned about who you were going to see at church. Y'all ain't ready, but I'm coming for you today. You See, see, this is why he said, I need you to do it again. I need you to do it again. Ooh, somebody, somebody, ooh, somebody's had some church hurt. And he's saying, those were people that hurt you. Do not, do not allow the actions of other people to dictate how you will live your life. Stop, somebody. Oh God, these words, these words, these messages he's sending me. Listen, this is for you. Stop letting the actions of people stop you from progressing. Stop letting the actions of people. Sometimes people are aware, sometimes people are not aware. This is why you, I'm telling you, you got to know the Lord for yourself. I can remember hearing my mom, and she still says, it. listen, <clears throat> I introduced you to Jesus. But you got to get your own relationship. Somebody say amen. You were introduced. Somebody introduced you to Jesus. Maybe it was your grandma. Maybe it was your auntie. I don't know who it was. They may have introduced you to Jesus. But this is, listen, but it's Sharon, come on. But you got to have your own personal, intimate relationship with God. The reason you got to have that is because when things happen, you will know how to handle them based upon the time that you have spent with the Father. If you have been out here just talking, the talk, but you haven't been walking the walk in order to live the life, baby, you're going to get annihilated. The enemy is going to eat you up and spit you out for breakfast. We're not even talking about lunch or dinner. In this season, you don't have time to play church. You are literally going to have to be the church. You are literally going to have to make sure that you spend time in his presence. This is, I heard you <clears throat> this morning. I got up and I flipped my routine. You know, I've been getting up at 4 a.m. Instead of getting up and working out at 4 a.m. And then going into the presence of God, I flipped it. The Holy Spirit said, I want you to flip that. So I got up and I spent time in the presence of God. And then I worked out. It was sweet. It was so sweet. Because I felt like I was giving the first part of my day to my body. Instead of to God. And God was like, JC, it ain't even that serious. Don't, don't do that. It's not that serious. He said, but today, I want you to shift it. And then this is what he told me. He said, the reason I wanted you to shift it is because I don't ever want the enemy to get comfortable with the way that you come into my presence. Baby, who is that for? God says, I need you to switch that thing up. I need you to switch up the way you come to me. Switch up your location. I know, I know, I hear people saying, I got my prayer closet, and when I, I go in my prayer closet, and, 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 well, what if you don't have no prayer closet? You'll feel bad. You'll feel some type of way that you don't have a room selected in a room that's, 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 you know, specifically for, God. Mm -mm. see, God ain't, that's religious stuff. God ain't in all of that. You know, when I hear somebody that says stuff like that, I take that and I say, if, if God, would that work for me? If it doesn't work for me, you know what I do with it? I say, okay. I, 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 I'll, 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 put that, I'll put that in my file. Because maybe that doesn't work for me right now in my life and what I have going on in my life in this season. But maybe it'll work at another time. Or maybe it's not for me at all. Let me say this here. Stop being so quick to hear what somebody else is saying that they are doing in their life and how that's working for them and just, just take it. Sit it. Sit it. Listen. Sit it at the feet of Jesus. Sit with it for a minute and ponder it. See, does this work for me? Because I'm going to tell you what a lot of us have been doing. A lot of us have been hearing things that people are doing concerning their relationships Whatever that is, relationship with the Father, with themselves, or with others, right? And we automatically implement, oh, that sounds good, and we implement it. 
And then when it doesn't work, we think, oh man, that, that didn't even work for me. Well, this is the question I want to ask you. Did you consult him first? And did you sit with it secondly for yourself? Many are the plans of the righteous. The man making plans, but it's the Lord who orders the steps. God, I'm bringing this to you. I really like this. Is this something that I should be partaking of? Is this, is, is this a principle that I need to apply? Now, if it comes out of the word of God, then that's clear. That's what he directly spoke to you for you to do. So you don't have to question. You just have to ask him, God, how do I implement this into my life? Does it make sense? All right. Let me jump back to James. Boy, I'm trying to get to James, daddy. Can we get to James? Y'all good? Let me know in the chat. Are you good? Are y'all good? I'm not going to even ask y'all why y'all quiet because I already know. <clears throat> I already know. Some of you are working. Some of you are just listening. You know, I, I, I was listening to this powerful woman of God the other night. And um, I wasn't typing anything. I was just listening. Sometimes you just got to listen. You just, I just need to hear what you're saying. All right, I'm going to James. Y'all, come on, let's go. I'm going to James. The voice trans, uh, translation says, James, who was a servant of God and the Lord Jesus, the anointed one to the 12 tribes of Israel who spread across the earth. James introduces himself in verse 1. All right, in verse 2, James says, don't run from tests and hardships, brothers and sisters. As difficult as they are. James is saying, listen, these tests and trials that we have to go through, these trials and these temptations, these moments when our, our when we're tested, listen, it ain't no joke. It's J Cena translation. These tests and trials, this 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 stuff that comes to penetrate our spiritual walls. It's no joke, bro. It's hard out here in this in this in these streets called life. He said, but as difficult as they are, you will ultimately find joy in them. What? James, you tripping. You telling me that I'm gonna find joy in my hardship? Now, how am I gonna do that? I'm so glad you asked. He said, if you embrace them. There we go, right there. You've been hanging on. Some of you just logged on, and God is saying to you, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I know you've been going through some stuff. I know you're already saying 2023, oh, my goodness, the stuff I've had to deal with in 2023 already. Listen, maybe it was your 2022, your 2020, your 2018. I don't know, but let me tell you something. This is the one thing that I have just come to accept, right? I've come to accept that in this life, there's going to be ups and downs, good days, bad days. I'm going to be on fire for the Lord, and then there are other days where I'm going to be like, God, I don't even feel like talking. There are days when I'm going to be gun ho about walking in purpose, and then there will be days where I feel like I don't even really want to log on. That's how I felt on Wednesday. There will be days... Because the Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes 3, there's a time and a season for everything under the sun. Listen, one day you dancing and you like, hey, get it, get it, get it. And the next day, you're like, I don't even want to listen to no music. Just, just, I don't want to listen to nothing. I'm just sick of everything and everybody. But James tells us here, he says, listen, you're going to face some trials. You, you're going to face some hardships. You need to just settle that. See, once you, that's a, that's a truth. That's a fact. You are going to face hardships. There are going to be some things that's going to happen in your life. You're going to be cruising along, and all of a sudden, boom, something, you're going to be like, what? I, did I see it? Nope. Some of you guys said you ain't did nothing wrong. You ain't seen it. You ain't did nothing wrong. It's called life. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I need to say this. Can I just give you this little insight? Can I just, I just want to help us, help us this morning. 
It's the enemy coming to test the word. He's coming to test it. If you said, I'm going to launch my business this year, the enemy is going to come and test to see if you really want that business. I have my planner over here, and the Holy Spirit said to us, this is what he said. He said, Jacina, I love that you're using your planner. He said, but you still haven't done the key things that I've been telling you to do since the beginning of the year. And I was like, well, God, what is that? He said, you have not written some things down that are key factors to how the direction of your life is going to go this year. You want me to be real transparent, don't you? Godly God. All right, I'm about to be very transparent. I'm super embarrassed right now. I feel shame, but I know that all of that comes from a spirit of pride, so we finna kill that today. Baby, I'm not playing with the enemy. I'm telling y'all, this year is about me. God says, you know how to teach a thing well. You are a good teacher. He said, the revelation that I gave you of purpose and vision, I gave that to you to share with others. He said, but I need you to be careful that you don't teach it only and don't walk in it yourself. Baby, bye. Let me bring that home for you real quick here. Yeah. Parents will tell their children, you do what I say, not as I do. Seriously? That's what we're doing out here in 2023 still? No, ma'am. No, sir. God says, you keep lodging. Hey, God, I repent. Jesus, I'm going to get it done today. I mean it. I, God, I repent. I thank you for bringing this to my knowledge so clear. Mm -hmm. I, 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 could, I could feel you. Like, I, I felt you just tapping like, get them goals down get them goals down thank you God that this will be the year that I start finish what I start I'm going to finish what I start your, your word says that he that began a good work in me shall complete until the end God I thank you that I will not just be out here teaching and reaching up ah, but I don't get it for myself I will not be that person and I repent live, publicly. Thank you for your conviction. Thank you for your conviction. I, God, I thank you. Thank you. Ooh, you love me. I know you do. I know, I know. Every time you get me right... It's you showing me how much you love me. And I thank you. I thank you for that love. It's a love I've never ever experienced before ever. And I'm learning more and more about your love. And I'm falling more in love with you. Thank you, Daddy. I'm sorry, y'all. I, I, I had to get that together. I'm sorry, y'all. Hold on a minute. Hey, hey, babe. Hey, I'm sorry. I meant to tell you that I'm not going to be coming up today because I'm going to the chaperone. Oh, uh, to the fun the spot. Grade. Mm -hmm. Have fun. No makeup, nothing, because it's going to be going. Baby, down. do your thing today. I want to tell you something super encouraging uh, yeah. next week about um, a lady talking about how she's been a mentor and a coach for years and years and years and years, and just never took the step to get her license. And then she told her whole testimony about when she did it, the whole world just clicked. Like, it there just clicked. Go. I need you to get send it to me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I love you. Thank you, boo. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Now, let me tell you how God confirmed that. You know what? Baby, when I tell you, when you start walking with God, God going to send you what you need. You hear me? Let me testify. Let me, let me testify real quick here. Jesus, do you see that I had just repented? I love the way he is with me. I love the way he is. 
because I wasn't too proud to repent. And I did it immediately. Because what we'll do is we'll go into hiding. We'll go into our secret closet and we'll let God deal with us. And what God is saying, I'm not using you to mock you or to shame you or to embarrass you publicly. That's not what I'm doing. He said, because there are many things that my children do that I don't expose them for. Ooh, baby, I know I'm talking to you. He says, I don't expose you because I love you. He said, but there are some things that I need you to be free of and free about. I need you to be able to show them that this is how it's done. Because they've never been taught how to do it. A lot of Christians are walking in pride. And we and we think, we think you know, ooh, I love the Lord. And, you know, the Lord is this. And he's saying, you're so prideful. I can't tell you nothing. I can't do nothing with you. You don't want to listen to nothing I say. You want everybody out here thinking you're perfect. But you're raggedy and you're, and you're snatched up. And, and your wig is, 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 is sour. I need... And that old dirty heart you got. You won't forgive nobody. You're easily offended. But you want to be out here wearing red bottoms. And, and looking like you're a million bucks. But you're two cents on the inside. God said. Because you repented. I want to show you something. Rhonda don't laugh. Because y'all know all it takes is one thing to make me laugh. And, this, and I'll be off. Last night I was. I, I was uh, meditating and spending some time with the Lord. And he said, I went to my email to do something. I don't know what it was. I went to read, I went to read a, 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 a devotional. And I, I don't know how I ended up clicking on this email. And in the email, it was talking about vision and purpose. That's how I know because I'm, I'm having a workshop on the 11th of March about uh, purpose and vision colliding, right? As I'm, as I'm strolling through the email, I see something that says life purpose coach certification. <laughs> it took me out too, brother. That's why I'm trying to stay focused. It said life and purpose uh life purpose coach sort of and I was like wait what that's me it's like this year God is showing me this is who I called you to be these are the things that are leading you to that calling but this is who I'm calling you to be and and this is these are the gifts and 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 the plans that I'm calling you to walk out this year right relationship when you have relationship He's able to give you some inside information that would not be revealed any other way, right? Unless you get intimate and close. So I, I, I read the email, and, and the email that said it was originally 197, but it's going to be 1970. And I was like, huh? And I kept looking like, okay, I think this might be wrong. I keep going. And sure enough, so Holy, I could just hear the Holy Spirit kept saying, Click on it. Click on it. So I clicked on it. And I could hear him saying, sign up. So I signed up. How about my coworker who comes, uh, she's like my para. She comes and she assists me, right? Y'all heard her. She just said, I want to share this encouraging testimony with you about a life coach and a mentor who said she was just doing her thing and it wasn't seeming like anything was working. I'm finna tell y'all something. Y'all better listen to me. Y'all know finna means I'm getting ready to. It's a southern thing, so just take it and keep it moving. She said, I wanted I wanna I wanna share the testimony with you because she said once she got her certification, things just took off. Y'all, God has been talking to me about getting certified. He's been talking to me about school. He's been talking to me about some different things. And I got scared. I got scared. 
and I said, God, I don't have no money to go back to school. I don't have it. I don't even have no com no computer equipment. My computer is acting crazy. I need a new computer. Like, I'm just saying all of this stuff, like, God, I want to do your will, but I need you to help me. This is why he's saying to us, try again. God, I want to do it. I know what you told me. So God has planted a seed in your heart. That didn't come for you. You going back to school. That didn't come from you. You starting that business. That didn't come from you. You, 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 you know, going out and doing something on a grand scale. Vision comes from God. When it's too big for you, that means it's God doing it. It's God speaking it. And what he's saying is, I need you to partner with me and to come into agreement with me. I just need you to take the steps that you can do. And then I will do the things that you cannot do. Do you understand? So that means I'm going to bring the people. I'm going to bring the resources. I'm going to bring everything that you need. The connections. Whatever it is you need to get done what needs to be done. I'm going to do that part. All I need you to do is say yes and start moving. As I start giving you instructions, start moving. Don't question. I know. Listen, doubt is going to come. This is why he's taking us to James. You're going to have some hardships. You're going to have some things that's going to come. They're coming to test the word. They're not necessarily coming for you, so to speak, but they're coming to test the word that's in you. This is why. When God gives you something, you got to pray over it. God, I hear you today. You got to pray over it. You got to write down what he says. You got, listen, you got to put that thing up against the word of God. Because if it's the word of God, he cannot lie. And that is not going to return back void. Why? Because he's God. And all of his promises are yes and amen. So if God tells you something, you need to write it down. And that's what he was just getting on me about. He said, J.C., you have it here. And you teach it all the time. But you're not writing it down for you. You out here going to save the world, but you're going to lose yourself. This is what the Bible says. What shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose the soul? Well, it's very similar to that. He said, if, you, if you're out here telling somebody about the goodness of Jesus and about this and that and about life and about purpose and about goals and about vision and about this and that, and then you don't take it and apply it yourself. You're missing the whole mark because I need you to be the example that they see. They hear you, but I want you to be the example in the earth. The physical, natural, human example that people see and they say, oh my God. Not only did she say it, but she's walking in it. So for God to have Novia call me right in the middle of this life, and I wasn't going to answer the phone. Holy Spirit said, answer it and put it on speaker. Baby, he don't make no mistakes. That girl said, and y'all heard her, I want, to, I want to share a testimony with you. What she just did was confirm what the Lord told me to do last night about getting licensed. Y'all not ready. God is saying this year, you're going to have to go to a higher level. See, what you did, what you did in the years past, what you did before, that was good for that season. That was good for the level that you were on. You understand? He said, but where I'm taking you now, you got to go from glory to glory. In order to go from glory to glory, you got to go from level to level. You heard of Wanda? In order from going from glory to glory... Level to level, to get to glory to glory, you got to do some different things. We, we cannot keep doing the same thing and expecting different results. You want your business to take off, but yet you don't want, you don't want to apply yourself to the business. God told me that last night. I'm, I'm, t I'm, I'm telling you, I had a whole conversation with him last night. I was like, God, you know I don't do it for money. I said, but God, your word says that my gifts will make room for me. You, you, it says that in your word. He said it absolutely will. He said, when you make room for me. I'm trying to tell y'all something, because I'm trying to help you and me. This is why I always say, when I pray, I say, God, speak to me, through me, and then back to me. I don't want to be talking to you all and having these conversations and just giving all this, all these uh, biblical nuggets and these revelatory jewels and gems. And then I'm just giving it out, but I'm not getting it back for myself. 
Baby, when I tell y'all by Monday morning, by the time I get back on this live on Monday morning, I'm going to have my stuff together and written out, and I'm going to show it to you live. Somebody hold me accountable and ask me. Jacina, you said you was going to show us your calendar, your planner that you wrote down, your, your goals and stuff. I got my vision and my mission written down. I got that written down because that's part of my workshop. But the part of the workshop that we don't get to in its totality uh, is writing down the goals. And when I did it with the first group, he told me I want you to sit down and do it with them. And I did. Instead, I was, I was in teacher mode. I was walking around, talking assisting helping and he said you didn't you, you did because the anointing was on you at the time to hear and write y'all better hear me when the lord tell you to do something you better to you better stop and do i'm all about accountability in this season i'm all that's why i have a follow up vision workshop for those that come to the vision the vision and purpose workshops, the one in January, February, and March. At the end of March, I have a follow-up workshop. And that follow-up workshop is to hold you accountable. Okay, sis, are you, did you do what you were supposed to do? We have been waiting on God, and God has been saying, I've been waiting on you. If you're not, if you're not ashamed... I want you to type in the chat. Blessings to you, sis. Have a good day. I know you're probably um, getting to work when you say that, Wanda. Have a good day. Can you type in the chat if you don't mind? This is just a this is just a, a, a piece of accountability to put it out there that God, I hear you today, and I'm gonna move. It's something that you need to try again. It's something that God is saying. Okay, I need you to go from level one to level two. I'm trying to take you from glory to glory in this thing. And he's telling you, you know that this word is for you. You know he's telling you, I need you to try it again. I know you got trials. I know you got pressure, temptations, distractions. You got all of these things going on that's trying to test your faith. They're trying to come against you because what those things are doing, they're coming for the seed that God planted. They're coming for the word that you were supposed to be getting to, to, to put, you know, put that seed in, to give that seed some protection so that it could grow. It's coming for that. That's all this, these hardships, these trials, these temptations, these distractions. They're coming for the word. What is the word that God gave you? What is it that you are not applying to your life? What is it that you know God told you to do, but you haven't really moved out there? You haven't launched into the deep. You still on the shore doing this to the water. <laughs> you know how you go to the beach, especially black people, especially black women. We go to the beach to be cute. We got our whole outfit on, matching earrings, matching um, sandals, flip-flops. Cute little, you know, outfit or whatever. Baby, we cute. We got our little, you know, drink. You know, we up under the tent. We got our music. Child, we ain't been more about to get in no water. But we go to the beach saying, I'm going to the beach. I said, you're not going to the beach. You're going to sit on the sand. When you go to the beach, you go to, you go to connect to the beach. <laughs> and to take pictures, Wanda, and let's not. To tell everybody, I went to the beach today. I ain't getting a lick of water, but I've been to the beach. Look at my outfit. That's what we're doing. And God said, this is why this is why you're not going to enjoy life on the level I want you to enjoy life on. Because you too, you too, wor you too worried about the little fleshly stuff. That's fleshly. Y'all better hear me in the spirit. God is saying to us today, how much time are you spending on the thing that I spoke to you about? Somebody he's told you, you need to have your own landscaping business. You need to have, you out here doing this business for these people, but you need to have your own. You're so good at it that you could, you could, your gift would make room for you to profit on your own, but yet you still hiding up under this organization or this company. God says, I'm trying to take you somewhere. I, I'm trying to do something in you. You're supposed to have a daycare, something, something with children. You ain't doing what you're supposed to be doing. Something with, um, like beauty. Maybe it's makeup or hair or 
fashion or you're supposed to be out here doing something decor something event plan i don't know what you're supposed to be doing you know somebody on here you're watching me and you have a daycare and and and, and god wants you to take that to another level and and you know it's going to require more of you and you're like god but he's going to send the people you may start out on your own doing bits and pieces of it but god's going to send the help he just needs your yes and your yes consists of yes lord steps not just yes in the mouth not just yes with the heart but you got to say yes with your actions right thank you sharon sharon said i'm supposed to be motivational doing motivational speaking all right what are you waiting on what has god said about that you need to sit with that this weekend we want to make time for everything else but for the except for time for things that are truly that truly matter in our lives in this season we, we, we we're good for praying you know this is you know one of my one of my things that I'm saying this year is 2023 will be real real good to me and not just me but me and my family this is my record-breaking year. This is the year of the impossible. This is the year of breakthrough. This is the year where I'm going to see God do supernatural in my life, ex exceedingly, abundantly, above all I can ask, think, or imagine. Like I'm saying all these things, and he's saying, you're saying, but you're not doing it. And I keep explaining to you all that faith without works is dead. It's dead, dead, and dead again. But then when we don't grab hold to the promise, when the promise doesn't manifest, we get upset. And we want to blame God. And God said, you can't blame me. I was ready to do my part, but I was waiting on you to do yours. God is not going to do what we can do. If God has been talking to you about going back to school, uh, you and I need to get it together. I started looking, but I wasn't really serious about looking. Because I'm thinking, I'm thinking about what it's going to cost. I don't have the money for that. And all of this. And God is saying, I ain't never even told you to worry about any of that. I told you to start looking. We want to dream big. But we don't want to work hard. Nothing. Look in Proverbs. Nothing that you get is going to be easy. If it's worth having. Anything that God tells us to do. Anything that God lays on our heart. Anything. Any vision. Any dream. Anything that God has shown you. I've called you this to do. I've called you to do this. And let me just say this right here. Because I had to talk to God about this too last night. Stop looking at people that are doing what, what God has called you to do. They cannot do it like you. I'll listen to people and I'll be like man. You know, especially when I go on YouTube, because I'm trying to grow my YouTube channel. And I'd be like, God, I've been putting up YouTube videos Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for the last, you know, three years. I was doing it every day. And God, you know, like, goodness, I, I just can't. And God is like, stop looking at other people. See, this is the thing that you have to remember. Everybody is not going to just be an overnight phenomenon. A lot of people that you are seeing that are now, you know, they're they're raised, they're raising up, they you know, it's, it's look like they just came out of nowhere. These people have been doing this stuff in the dark, hidden, full blown for God, full blown walking in purpose, full blown doing what they're supposed to be doing, and nobody even knew them, or very very few people did. And God is saying, you cannot allow those that know you or what you're capable of doing to dictate what I told you to do. If I called you, I qualified you. Stop looking and comparing yourself to other people because you're not them. I called you. So I need you to do it again. I need you to go apply again. Some of you, I need you to apply for the first time. I need you to, he said, I need you to build your faith up again to do what I told you to do. And you're not going to stop until you walk in it. Amen. This is the year we're going to finish what we have started. No more of this starting and don't finish. Starting and don't finish. No. 
it is time for us to get it together and walk out the impossible in our life so that we can point point people back to him and say this was God all God all I did was say yes that's all I did and he showed up and showed out amen all right I need you to meditate on James because I need you to remind it as you begin to take these steps you're gonna have some stuff that's gonna come up against it but James said you just rejoice saying and praise and worship you just rejoice. You keep praying. You keep reading your word. Do not allow the distractions to take you off focus. Okay? They might come and get your attention. Uh-uh. Get back focused. He said, embrace it. Lord, I thank you. I know that sounds so crazy. Lord, I thank you for this season that I'm in. And I thank you that you're bringing me through and out. I thank you that I'm growing through it. I ain't going through I'm growing through. I thank you, Father God, that I will pass these tests. I thank you that the testing of my faith is going to produce perseverance. I thank you. I will persevere. That means I am going to get over. I'm going to come over. I'm an overcomer. I am going to reach the other side of this, and I will walk in victory. So I embrace what you're doing because the more I repel, the more I push back, it's going to come again. If we don't get these lessons and we don't pass these tests, they're going to come again. We ought to be sick and tired of failing these tests. Uh-uh, God, I thank you for what you're doing in my life. It may not feel good, but it, it's good for me. I thank you that my faith is blossoming under pressure. I thank you that you're teaching me true patience as I endure. I thank you giving me the strength to endure. I thank you, Father God, that you're equipping me to walk this race, to walk this season out with endurance so that I may complete this journey and that I may cross the finish line, mature, complete, and wanting nothing. Take that scripture. Ooh, that was good. Take that scripture in the voice translation and turn it into a prayer. I'm going to put it in here. Take the scripture and turn it into a prayer. That's what I just did. I was just reading the scripture and I turned it into a prayer. God, I thank you. You know, I'm, Lord, I thank you that I'm, you know, no. Lord, I thank you that in this current season, I thank you for the current season that I'm in. For all of the things, oh God, that are happening in my life. I think, because the Bible says that we are to give God thanks, right? He said, you're not, you don't give him thanks for what's happening, but you give him thanks in it. So that means, God, even in this, I give you thanks because I'm still here. You're still with me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to reach victory. If I endure, if I persevere and endure, I'm going to see victory in this area. It's time to try it again. God says, it, rather it's trying the actual assignment doing the actual assignment again or if it's simply believing God again do it again try it again and watch what he does father we thank you <sighs> oh God you had a lot to say today and we thank you for every word of it we thank you that you are good and your mercy endures forever we thank you father God for the word that we've received on today we repent for not uh, following through for not taking the necessary steps for not doing the things that you've called us to do. Uh, we thank you, Father. Please help us, God. Some of us are dealing with, with doubt and unbelief. Lord, we believe, but help our unbelief. Sometimes we look at the things you told us to do, and, 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 it, and it just looks too big. It scares us. Sometimes it pushes us up against the wall, and, and, and we're, we're terrified. We, we don't even know, like, how can I even do this? We can't do anything apart from you. But with you, we can do all things. We know that your word says that faith without works is dead. God, help us to walk in faith. But help us to also accompany faith with the work that's needed to see your promises come to pass in our lives. We thank you and we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you guys. Listen, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, Jacina Speaks. Please, please, please subscribe. I need your support. I'm asking that you help me 
reach some of these goals that God has given me. I can't do it by myself, but if you help me, I can. Amen? I love you all. It's time to get it done. It's time to do what God has called us to do. Amen? Let's get it. Have an amazing weekend, and um, I'll see you guys on Monday. Don't forget, I am having a vision and purpose a workshop on March the 11th here in Orlando. And um, I need you to be there. If you know I'm talking to you, if today you was like, oh, man, you just all of my toes. Somebody said it at some point, like, oh, my goodness, you was really coming for me. That's the Holy Spirit coming for you. I'm just, I'm just opening this up and letting him speak through me. And he's coming for you because he's saying it's your time and it's your season. Listen, the workshop is $75. It's going to be the best $75 that you ever spent. Come to this workshop instead of getting a perm. Come to this workshop instead of going to get a pedicure. Come to the workshop instead of going out and eating $75 worth of food. You and your spouse and you and your children. Come to this workshop because you are ready to do what you need to do for you. That's what this workshop is about. It's about stopping all this talking and let's get in it work. Nothing is going to happen in your life by osmosis. God is not a super a Santa Claus and he's definitely not our sugar daddy. God is saying, I need you to do what you can do so I can apply my super to your natural and give you an Ephesians 3.20 type of year. Are you ready? Sign up. I'll see you guys. Love you. Have a good weekend. Bye.